Hey guys, and welcome to another Game Explained discussion. I'm your host, Andre Seegers, and this time we're joined by Derek Binder to discuss our thoughts on the new E3 trailer for Ukulele. So, let's get started. Alright, Derek, so Playtonic Games has released a brand new trailer for Ukulele Games, or for Ukulele Games, <laughs> and that should be a whole company. I just take a whole string of these games. Uh, yeah, exactly. Well, that's their plan if they get these to be successful, like, we just branch out with more of these characters. Dude, that's so, yeah, true. Bring it on. That's a good point. And we actually got what might be some hints of that with the arcade scene in this <laughs> in this game. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, so they showed off a ton of new stuff. I mean, they showed off, I mean, a large chunk of it was devoted to the level we've already seen uh, several times before, which which we now know is Tribal Stack Tropics, according to some of the previews out there. But we can see they've added so much stuff to it. Like, it almost <laughs> looks, like, looks like an entirely new level at this point. Uh, and beyond that, they showed a bunch more as well. They showed off a snow level in full. They showed off scenes involving the arcades, as I mentioned. Uh, what, lo what looks to be like a haunted house type thing. A mine cart. We got to see how the transformations work with um, ukulele turning into this weird plant monster, <laughs> and just a bunch of really fun, great stuff. Like, what I'm getting from this is it's like scratching that itch I kind of knew I had, but didn't fully realize I had until watching this trailer <laughs> for, like, one of those old-school 3D platformers. Yeah, and this this is the thing, like, we've had 3D platformers before. Like, I just played Ratchet and & Clank, and that's great, but that is a PS2-era platformer more so than anything else. This is harkening back to that... N64 area where it was just hop and bop around, have some interesting uh, things, collect stuff, and just go. And <laughs> that's the real sense here. It's like, like, I love how expansive it is. Like, they have that one shot towards the end where they're just gliding down across, and according to one of the previews, there's, like, a huge Empire State Building, like, location in the middle of the uh, Tropics level, and it's just, like, massive to climb up to. I think I said, like, four minutes to climb it without any interruption. It's like, that is a massive amount of stuff, and that's really cool to see, especially since they've stated that there's only going to be five levels in the game. But when they're this big and you can take tackle them in any order, who cares? They look great. That's exactly it. Like, these levels do look to be massive. And I believe in the GameSpot preview, they, they explicitly mentioned that... Uh, they compared to Mario 64, where the levels, I believe, on average, or maybe at least the first one, was four times the size of a bomb battlefield for Mario 64. Although I'm not quite sure why they didn't compare it to Banjo Kazooie. <laughs> maybe it's a slightly less impressive figure if you compare it to Banjo Kazooie. But I was getting the same sense you did, like especially during that final scene where you do see them flying over the land. Like that, that is so evocative of Banjo Kazooie for me. Like specifically, I'm thinking of um, the uh, tropical beach level. God, well, I can't remember the name. I know all Banjo Kazooie levels, <laughs> but in the beach, you know, like you can go super high up to like the lighthouse and then you can jump off and just fly around, or you can fly any number of points in that level. But that's what yeah. it reminded me of. Like, I just love that sense of freedom that Banjo Kazooie had. And Ukulele seems to be nailing it here, um, as far as I can tell. And it really is just bringing me back to that classic style. Especially with, I mean, it's obvious they're aiming for that. Like, I mean, they're not even hiding it. Like, how the opening with Platonic Games looks like one of those classic rare logos. It looks straight up the same. <laughs> <laughs> and then at the end, you know, they're talking a Banjo Kazooie style format, right? Like, it, they know what it is, and that and what it is looks to be awesome. Yeah, exactly. Like, I, I know before I was like, I was, I was a little worried. It's like, maybe it'll be too close to Banjo-Kazooie. And then I see it in action like this. Now that we have proper gameplay, I'm like, oh, I don't care anymore. <laughs> you know, yeah. who cares if it's too close to Banjo-Kazooie? Because we don't have a Banjo-Kazooie. Yeah, that's basically it. Um, I, I feel the same way. Like, I think I had the initial concerns at first as well. And, you know, granted, who knows how I'll fully end up feeling when I play it. But for now, it's like, you know, this, I love Banjo-Kazooie. This is the Banjo-Kazooie we haven't had in years. Uh, so I'm okay with it. <laughs> so I do wonder what an eventual Banjo-Kazooie sequel would actually end up looking like at this point now. If they would actually st stick to the style or stray from it because ukulele is already in their territory. Yeah, I don't know. It'd be, it'd be interesting to see them try to compete with each other. Yeah, that, that would, uh, that would be great. It'd be awesome <laughs> to make a cameo in each, in, in each other's games. Cameo? Oh. Because they also had a cameo game too? Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I never played that one. <laughs> yeah. But even like even the platform and the movement, you know, just looks is very similar to that era, uh, with you know, which again is a focus on pla on platforming, which is a weird thing to say just because it's something that you seldom see these days in a three D game like this. I mean, in some mm -hmm. of those open world games, platforming is an element, but never but you don't see it done quite as tightly as it appears to be here. Where like you're yeah. jumping platform on platform, you have, you know, like your quasi double jump with the wings in this case. Yeah, and what I like about this, you see hints of this throughout the trailer, is that 
Yuka, they, and this is something they, when we interviewed them uh, probably a year ago now, yeah, last year. Uh, that they wanted to do is have Yuka be much more active than Banjo ever was. Because Banjo really didn't do much. It was all about Kazooie. Yeah. And Yuka, you can see her flit out the tail at one point, that whole fire breath sequence. The fact that uh, the fast travel option when you roll as Yuka rolling up into a ball while uh, uh, Laylee runs on top. You know, that that's really cool to see them sort of working together much more so than Banjo Kazooie and Banjo and Kazooie ever did. Yeah, I think I think that is the case. Although, you know, it's funny. I didn't, never really had that thought about Banjo Kazooie until people mentioned it in hindsight, in hindsight. I'm like, yeah, I guess that kind of was the case. But it never really bothered me then. But yeah, it does seem like they are going, they are taking the idea and just building upon it. So they're refining yeah. the idea, which is which is a good thing to see. Yeah, I mean, I, I just want to say, like, this game looks, it really looks great, just from a visual standpoint, even. Mm -hmm. Because, like, indie games are always kind of, like, a little bit, I don't know, hit or miss <laughs> with their art <laughs> style. Uh, sometimes they nail it, sometimes they don't. A lot, of course, go for the intentionally retro look, uh, just because that is a more cost-effective approach, I, I believe, in general. Um, but here, they are going all in, you know, with this being a 3D platformer, and it doesn't look low budget at all. Or, uh, you know, who knows what their budget is. But my point is, like, this looks like it's coming directly from Rare, assuming Rare were still a thing. <laughs> I know they technically are, but you know what I yeah. mean. Yeah. No, no, it, it totally does. I believe they're using the Unity en engine. Yeah, they are. And this is just looking fantastic. Like, you get the, lots of little details. Uh, some cartoonish looks like when they're rolling, doing that racing thing down the mountain where they're rolling on Yuka. You can see the clouds puffing up and they have that sort of stylistic appearance to them. Uh, you know, there's like lots of broad details here. I'm not sure how great it will look close up, but I don't, again, I don't find myself not really caring about that because we are hearkening back to an older age. We we know we don't have the full AAA budget to it, and it's still like the style carries it. There is so much style here, and uh, it all works. Like, I love the little detail because, you know, their whole big thing is adding googly eyes to everything, so <laughs> right. there's little rings that they have to fly through to, act, uh, to make platforms appear in certain areas have googly eyes on top. It's like, yeah, sure, why not? That's pretty great it just the style just works it has enough detail that you feel satisfied and it looks good but you know it, it's obviously i don't think it's breaking the budget to get them to have that level of detail yeah i mean well yeah who, who fully knows what the money situation is but it <laughs> what it doesn't matter because it looks it looks impressive like you could have told me this is a, a rare game and i would totally buy it hook line and sinker assuming i didn't know about all the kickstarter stuff <laughs> there is there are doing some more some more interesting things here that does mix up a little bit from what banjo kazooie was and one of the elements that they're playing around with is the fact that these levels aren't necessarily static at least not first because evidently you can access i guess the levels come in two forms um when you mm -hmm. first access a level it's apparently smaller and simpler uh, when you come back later with more pages of things you collect, uh, it apparently expands greatly in scope. Now, we haven't seen, I don't think we've actually, we've actually seen examples of this, but that does seem to be an interesting way of going about it, if not entirely what I expected from how they announced it would work originally. Because as we were talking about before this discussion, when they first talked about that feature, I think last year, I expect it to be a little bit more gradual instead of just a uh, like mm -hmm. a, a toggle, right? Yeah, that's what I. That's sort of the sense I got too. Like maybe like you get five pages and here is like a new section you can go back to, and all of a sudden like you get f you know six more or whatever. Here's another section of that first level that you can now access. And based on the GameSpot preview that uh, we looked over, it looks like you start out with uh, you unlock the world with just one pagey, and then when you hit twenty pages the rest of it is unlocked so you can do the trickier challenges mm -hmm. for it. And, I, and the idea in and of itself is a good one to make you come back to these levels, get more mileage out of them. So yeah, they're simple, teaching you how the game works at first, and then you come back and all of a sudden, here's the real challenge to everything where they're really putting the test to you. It feels like a way to limit how much progress you can do without making it only move-based, like how Banjo-Kazooie was. But they had things like that in the past games, but the way it worked then is you needed certain moves from later in the game to traverse, you know, further into the earlier ones. Yeah. And, you know, that that, that completely works. I, I, it helps lengthen their games, and as they were trying to tell before, you don't need to go back. You know, you can just keep making forward progress with the pages that you need to unlock each of the levels, beat the game that way, and you don't need to collect everything. Kind of misses the point in my opinion, but mm. that, that option is there. I, I think, I, I'm not quite sure if I'm disappointed or not with the idea of it's just like, here it is once, and then boom, here it is expanded. And I'm like, I'm not sure if I, like, 
I, I the idea still works, but I'm like, I don't know if I'd want to have it gradually expand because like that means more backtracking to that level or just this one big chunk like they're like they are doing well i don't mind the backtracking thing i mean that's how past games work to some degree as i just mentioned i was fine with that yeah i i really need to see how this mechanic's going to work in general but yeah i'm not i'm really not sure how to feel about it <laughs> i mean it's so different from what i can think of uh before from games of this style that i i'm not quite sure what to make of it like i'm more curious to see how they're gonna block off the access. Like, there's going to be, like, a glass wall in the way, or will that part of the world does not exist at all? Like, I, will you not even be able to see it, for instance? So, yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I kind of loved... What I did like about the original games was that you you got thrown into a brand new world, and it was your oyster. You could go wherever you wanted, or, you know, within limits, you know, to the degree you could with your moveset. Mm -hmm. And um, just, you know, do whatever you wanted to do. Like, I liked that sandbox experience. And it sounds like you may have a little bit less of that, at least your first time through these levels. But maybe, I mean, again, these levels will be bigger, so maybe they are offering something on a similar scale to the original game, uh, while then expanding expanding that when you come back to the level. So again, I really need to see how this is going to work. But yeah, I mean, I, I will say it's not like the first feature that will come to my mind when I think of what I want in a <laughs> Banjo-Kazooie successor. <laughs> Yeah, but it works. I, th I think it completely works. And uh, the thing I've, the other thing I noticed about this trailer is how densely packed everything seems to be. Like, there's, like, it seems like there's different paths to go, there's enemies to fight, there's characters to interact with, and there's, like, there's always looks like, like, looking ahead, there seems like there's something to do. Oh, yeah, it's it's jam-packed. Well, and that's what made the banjo Good games so great. It, well, at least the first one. Two, we kind of strayed from that a little bit. <laughs> and in fact, I actually touch on a topic like this in an upcoming video, probably tomorrow. So stay tuned. Not about this game. About another game that's going to be oh, pretty okay. big. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I'm with you. Like, it, this really does look like Banjo scaled up. I mean, that's what I wanted to see. And I love that. Like, I, I don't like things being big for the sake of being big. I want things to do in those areas, and it looks like they are hitting, they're totally nailing that in this, from what <laughs> I can tell. I believe this is the same song we've heard before that was playing during the trailer, correct? I think so. I, I, I'm pretty sure this is a Grand, uh, a Grand, Grand Kirkhope Kirk piece. Yeah. Yeah. It has to be. And it, yeah, it <laughs> you totally can tell. has to be. And uh, no, I, I'm liking it. I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing more of the soundtrack, like, like going in this world and seeing how the music changes and develops and what kind of, uh, like, pieces we can expect to hear I, I'm, I'm really excited about the soundtrack well especially because i mean that that to me is partly what made those original games great like i rare back in the day they probably had the best lineup of composers of any developer even nintendo mm -hmm. anyone they're like every one of them was amazing in their own way uh and they put out some of the best soundtracks at, at that time and the fact that they have Grant Kirkhope and David Wise and someone else, I believe. Like, I, yeah, I'm not sure. I, think I, I know I there's think a third one. Yeah, yeah. He, I know he does good work too. I just I feel bad not, not being able to remember his name. Yeah. Re regardless, my point is like those were so important in the original games, and it seems like they are they knew that and they're nailing it with this one as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so I am really just excited to to hear more from this as you are. Especially with, you know, David Wise's recent track record of, like, Tropical Freeze, which was some of my favorite music I've heard in a game in recent years. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. It's just all coming together so well, I feel. Yeah. And what else has stuck out to you about this that we haven't talked about yet, uh, I guess, would be the thing? Not too much. We, we covered it all pretty well. <laughs> I think, I mean, I, I was glad to see the minecart, but I don't think we ever really had a proper minecart at the Banjo games. We did in the Donkey Kong games, of course. Mm -hmm. And minecarts, when done well, are always a ton of fun. And oh, it looks yeah. like they are going to be fun here as well. And I like seeing the transformation here as well, even th even if it did remind me of that one um, plan monster from Cameo with like the uh, the boxing. Oh ones. yeah, <laughs> I remember that thing now. Yeah. I never played it, but I remember that from the trailers and all that. Yeah, that makes sense because I believe they do have the Cameo art designer on the team as well. That so. would make sense exactly. Yeah, might as well use utilize those ideas. No, it, uh, it's all like like the levels look fun to play as and that's the big the big takeaway from here I just want to get into this game and start exploring and playing around and seeing what there is play and... tonicking around oh yes <laughs> yeah. but yeah they said they, they have of course more to reveal with the whole fact that they got those retro games that are going to be in there eight multiplayer games that, that they have and yeah I mean they just they have their focus they know what they want to put in there and they're going to you know 
Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, I'm still not entirely sure how much of the game we've seen. I mean, as far as I know, we've only definitively seen two levels, and I'll be exploring this more in probably our upcoming analysis. But then we saw hints of a few others. I think I mentioned it at the start. But I don't mm. know if those are their own thing or part of the existing levels. It, regardless, even if they are their own thing, we saw so little of them that we basically have the full world left to find out what they are. It all looks so fun to see like the, the swimming level and the, with all the construction nearby the haunted le uh, haunted house level where there's actually some stealth action going on it's just like there's uh, each level they showed they had slightly different gameplay yeah but well, each area just we should yeah. say just in case they're not their that own is levels. true <laughs> <laughs> now there's one other thing that came out here uh, which unfortunately is a little bit of unfortunate news especially given how upbeat everything else has been and that's the fact that the game is has been officially delayed you uh, quarter one um, of next year, and I'm a, I'm of uh, actually I was gonna say I'm of I'm of two minds on this. I'm not actually I'm on one, I'm of one mind on this. And for one, this is totally expected to me. It's a Kickstarter game. I don't think I don't, I can't think of a single big one that hasn't been delayed to some degree. Uh, mm -hmm. But this delay is not that bad. It's only a few months, assuming they hit it. You know who knows? It is kind of Kickstarter thing to keep delaying games. <laughs> uh, but based on how far they've come, so you know since last year. Like, I'm impressed with what I've seen so far, and it sounds like, according to them, they are pretty close to completion, they just want a few more months to polish up, and assuming that is fully accurate, I think I think they'll hit quarter one, and that's the case, I'm okay with that. Like, if they need more time to polish a game, fine, go for it, especially because that's what I was expecting. I had, mm -hmm. I honestly had no hope they'll make it this year, <laughs> so... <laughs> yeah, I mean, I... It sounds like they totally could make that 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 deadline though. It's just that they want to put in that extra polish, which you know I'm all for. I have no issues with that whatsoever. And getting them out of that October period feels like a good idea. That way they won't. I mean, obviously there's a lot of hype for this game, but I still don't want it getting buried underneath the yeah you know, the usual AAA tent poles that come Is out. Is that the best idea though? Yeah. So potentially the NX could be coming out, which would kind of screw over the Wii U version of the game. Right. So I that that's a that's a tough one to go. We don't know exactly when in uh, Q1 2017. Maybe they'll shoot for January. Maybe they'll go early February and get it out before that point. Um, but I I don't think it's going to matter too much, especially if there's backwards compatibility of, of any kind, because I believe this is getting, I can't remember if this is getting a physical release or not. The whole thing is, like, I don't think it's going to affect it too much. I think, I do think the Q1 release date is probably better for it. I'm actually not sure. I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, I, well, it is better for it, but it'll be done then. So <laughs> yeah. that's a key consideration. It's something it could be done earlier. I don't know. I think I don't know if I think Q4 maybe would be better for it. I don't. It's it's it's, it's hard to say. With it's different for indie games, I think, than it is mm. you know, for AAA games too. We're dealing with different scales, of course. That so who true. knows? Um, but the important thing is that the game is going to be done. <laughs> that they'll come out. Yeah. Uh, but I'm not entirely sure that Q4 Q4 would have been a bad thing. The game I feel like is such its own thing. It's not really going up against much, especially with Nintendo's complete. You know what? So with Nintendo just completely like pooping the bed this year, <laughs> like it might have been better for them because there's nothing for Nintendo to compete with almost. Uh, whereas quarter one, there actually might be stuff with Nintendo to compete with, considering the NX might be coming out then and potentially Zelda. So, yeah. but I mean, ultimately, I don't think it matters that much. <laughs> but yeah. I'm just throwing out there if you had to choose between the two, uh, the holidays may not have been a bad one, but. Yeah, yes. but I'll I'll take the extra development time to polish it up, and because I'm going to play this no matter what, I don't care what's coming out. <laughs> yeah, the, the, we might see a Shovel Knight situation here because most of a lot of the sales for Shovel Knight came from the Wii U version, and because people have such an association between Rare and Nintendo, the Wii U version might be the best-selling version of it. And going off of that, actually, they've revealed that Platonic themselves are mainly handling the. PC and Wii U versions of Ukulele with Team 17 who's publishing the game uh, working closely with them to develop the PS4 and Xbox One versions. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about you, but I'm planning to get this on Wii U. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess I'd have to because it's either that or PC for me since I don't own any of the other consoles. Oh, okay. So yeah, that, that makes the choice easy. It is, I don't know, there is something kind of just reassuring knowing that, I'm sure every version will be totally fine, but there's oh, something yeah. kind of reassuring knowing that Platonic is working personally on the Wii U one. Uh, and just some, and that just kind of harkens back to the earlier era too, where Rare was straight up in Nintendo stable, right? So mm. I don't know. It doesn't matter, but it's just kind of cool that they're working on the Nintendo version. I feel like I 
think that's just like again something a lot of Nintendo fans could really hold on to and enjoy. And even if you don't have the Wii U, I mean, you're still this game's probably still going to be pretty damn good. I mean, it, they're working closely with it. It shouldn't be too hard to, especially if they're going to do the PC version. It should not be that difficult to take the PC version and get it onto a PS4 and Xbox Oh no, I mean, One. the fact that, I mean, if it's capable of running on the Wii U, then yeah, I mean, it shouldn't yeah. be hard to get it running on, on hardware considerably more powerful, so. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, like I said, I'm just excited for everything. I mean, there's very little here that I'm not sure of, you know? Like, yeah. That makes me worried about the game. Yep, same here. I just want to play it. Just really <laughs> want to play it, and uh, we'll be seeing at the least E3. I don't know if we'll actually be playing it. I'm not. I don't know if they actually said if we would be or not. But we'll be seeing it and talking to the developers at least. So we, yeah. we'll be finding out more, and I can't wait. And E3 is next week. Holy crap! <laughs> yeah. Who knew that came up quick? <laughs> yep, Jesus. Yeah, I know. I, it was kind of funny when I posted the, you know, put the trailer up every, and you know, labeled it E3 2016 because that's what they called their video as well. And everybody's like, "Wait, E3's already?" I'm like, uh, "No, it's coming." But it's, we're at the time now where everybody's like, trying to get noticed because it's pre E3. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's right. So, but I think it works out in this case. Yep, I hope so. All right, well, I think we covered it pretty well. So, thanks guys for watching. If you liked our discussion. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, of course, if you haven't already, to find out more about ukulele in the near future, specifically next week. And, of course, make sure to like and follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well, at GameXplain. You can find links to those in the description below, so we keep updating everything we post. And just keep it locked on GameXplain for everything else from this game and E3 next week. Alright, guys, catch you later. Bye.